what is the perspective of an EFT therapist on how to help a couple get past an affair? How do you talk about the disclosure process in EFT? There's an eight step process for couples who have experienced an attachment injury. And Sue defines an attachment injury as an event that ruptured the attachment fabric between the partners. Infidelity is in a way is the easiest one to talk about because it's so understandable as a rupture. The person who was betrayed will feel in their heart, never again, never again will I let my loved one into this place of my heart. Okay, so it's an event Mm -hmm. that ruptures and redefines the relationship as unsafe. And the betrayed partner will on some level have said to themselves, never again. Part of your heart hardens. That's a piece of what changes the relationship. Because if we can't open our hearts, if we can't open a chunk of our hearts, then it will start changing our love relationships. It will start changing us over time. I want everyone to know about the attachment injury repair model, AIRM, or the ARM process. So you have a couple, they're highly distressed, there's been an affair, they're angry, destroyed, scared, crushed, and they want to stay together. What kind of language would you use to both instill hope And to acknowledge, not bypass the pain. Yeah, we address attachment injuries from the beginning of treatment or as soon as we know of one, we address the affair, but we don't try to repair it till stage two. For sure in stage one, when couples are coming to terms with the reality that one has cheated, the affair has to end in order to start EFT. That's one of the contraindications. Mm -hmm. My job is to create the safe space for you to to make sense of, explore, and have these agonizing conversations. Mm -hmm. So we in EFT, our process consultants, our job is to make the safe space. And Mm -hmm. we do that by having a non-pathologizing, non-judgmental, open-hearted stance, even towards the person who had the affair. There's no judgment. And I'll say it's a no judgment zone. Good people have affairs all the time. In order to lower our defenses, it's really important that you both feel safe in this conversation with me because we're going to need to talk about the echoes of this infidelity. And we're going to need to process the pain that echoes around, rumbles around, escalates your relationship. So my job is to validate each partner's perspective make space for it, normalize it, and then start finding the softer feelings that the underbelly of that, of that perspective, that pain, that agony, that frustration, that anger, that rage, that protest, all those reactions make perfect sense when you feel that betrayal. I think as a clinician, it can feel overwhelming. Like here's this couple that wants to stay together, but their pain is so vast. Like how do you even begin? And what I hear you saying is you're transparent. Mm -hmm. Always. Always. You talk about your job, which is to create this safe space. To speak the unspeakable, to process the painful, process the agonizing, to tolerate the harrowing, as we say in the cafe. Yeah. 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 And then one other thing, Jen, that you've heard from me before, because I love this concept and I love the reality of this. You guys will end up stronger in what right now is a broken place. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I love it. Sorry, I got it. I remember that. If you've ever seen an x-ray of your own or a loved one's broken bone, which is hard to look at, but then you see the x-ray six weeks later and a calcium envelope forms outside the break. Yeah, And that's our body's protection. Our body forms a calcium envelope on the outside of the break. So the break has time to knit itself together from the inside out. So literally for all of us who have broken bones, we are stronger in what was the broken place because we not only have the bones knitted back together, but then there's that calcium envelope on the top of where the fracture was. So couples who repair from an affair are going to be stronger after the repair process than they were before the break. We literally get stronger in our broken place. I love that so much. And so you will say that you will use that metaphor with your couples. Totally. And I'll remind them of it. And sometimes they'll say, well, it's easy for you to say, or it's easy for you to be hopeful or Catherine, are you hopeful? Oh, but you're hopeful for everyone. And I say, no, I'm not. Mm. No, I'm not. And so I hold the hope for them while that's too risky for them to hold the hope. 
that as a process consultant, that's what I do is make space for each of their experiences and hold the hope because we always believe in people's ability to have limbic revision. We always believe in people's ability to have limbic revision. They can begin to see themselves and their partner differently. Yeah. And they can react differently to their distress. And so whether we're adding in something from Michelle's question about sex addiction and other forms of sexual acting out, people use sexual acting out and infidelities become part of a coping strategy, a negative coping strategy, and it can become compulsive or a part of an addiction. Right, right. And so then the attachment injury repair process, which is messy at its best, but then it gets even messier when you're adding in addiction recovery. And a lot of CSAT, Certified Sex Addiction Therapists, they have a very specified process of disclosure. Part of being trained in CSAT, they want everybody to do the same process in its prescriptive way. And so attachment injury repair isn't quite prescriptive. We have the eight themes. We know the eight content areas that we have to focus on, but our priority is to follow the pain and follow the emotionality Mm -hmm. rather than have a specific order of content being disclosed. So we're not as specific. We're not as rigid. That can be good and bad. I'm just saying in EFT, we make space for all of the disclosure to come out by following the affect. What does someone feel most guilty for? Let's go there. That's always what we do. I mean, That's like always what we do, regardless of what the couple brings to us, we're always prioritizing their pain, their guilt, their sadness, their angst, their emotions around betrayal, all because we understand attachment and we know what an infidelity does, what threat that puts in the head and the heart. Mm-hmm. And of course, when a human is threatened, they will protest. Mm-hmm. And that's how we know to make space for and prioritize affect. We follow the affect and that's more just sort of our bottom up style versus a top down set of steps. Yeah, we have themes that need to be done in a loose order. They're numbered one through eight. We have three process studies on attachment injury repair, so we know it works. Yeah. But embedded in each of the themes can be overlap from the other themes. We can go forward to go backwards. Going backwards in the themes isn't a bad thing. It's a recursive iterative process because you're going deeper down closer and closer to primary emotion. Someone gets defensive. Oh, you pop back up. This is where, you know, EFT therapists know we have to be relevant. And so working and tolerating and holding the mess of it all makes us relevant because who else is going to help people hold their pain? Yeah. and stay together and work together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, a huge topic, an affair, and then sometimes there's sexual addiction, so there's multiple affairs, and it is very complex. But we know our overarching goal is to follow the affect and follow the pain. And we have guidelines and themes and steps. Attunement and following the affect is where we're going to get the most traction and the most healing. For more hot tips on emotionally focused therapy, go to theeftcafe.com and sign up for our newsletter where you will receive short little clips like the one you just watched.